Hello, Chris and Wes. Hey, Hello. Jeff. How are we doing? <laughs> we are doing good. <laughs> how are you two doing? On the on the heels of a, or you're in the midst of a of a Kickstarter for ZingQuest. Doing yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I, I'm I'm doing good. I I am at a um a, a solid medium to high energy level for today. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. Yeah, where I think we're about the same spot. Uh, I can't remember. I think we are at the same. So did you did you start on Tuesday or Monday or Wednesday? Uh, we went ahead and jumped right in on Monday the first. So okay. Yeah, it looks like we're as far as dollar amount about the same same number of days. So nice. we're kind of both hitting that thing. I didn't. Do you get? Do you use Kick Track to to view any of your statistics? Uh, no, we have not yet. Actually, um, I've been kind of poking into what all Kickstarter has just by default. Uh, but I can say that it's not a lot or enough. So, so yeah, so we're brand kick, new babes. Yeah, yeah. Kick, kick Track is good. I do not believe it's projections because they will, you know. First day you're gonna be making thirty grand. You're gonna be all right. You know, <laughs> it's like, but it does show you day to day. One of the charts is day to day. You can see like how many, um, how many people have uh, have um, supported, and actually also how many comments. So there's other useful information you can pull out of Kick Track, and you can also dump other pe any any Kickstarter you can dump into Kick Track. Nice. And so you can kind of do some analytics. Especially even, you know, ones that have, um, you know, even ones that have already funded, you can look and just just kind of see the, you know, the shape of the curves and and all that sort of stuff. So that's been uh, pretty good. So you've got this thing called Beyond Deep. Beyond yeah. Deep. Beyond Deep. Yes. <laughs> uh, as yeah. Pompous as it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Beyond Deep. Um, it is Wes and I's first Kickstarter, um, and uh, it is a Morkborg horror adventure that has turned into kind of a huge, like, 80-plus page zine. Um, you know, all of your Morkborg creepy monsters and bizarre weapons and things like that, um, but kind of tapping into some ideas Wes and I wanted to talk about. Uh, having to do with worker exploitation and, you know, what carving a, a life out at the bottom of everything during the apocalypse would look like. So, ah, okay. That makes sense. At 80 pages. Um, yeah. I've, I've, uh, you're, you're, you're going where angels fear to tread. So are you, <laughs> as far as the thickness of that, uh, I, yeah. I, I, I've kind of thought about going about that direction once and I wavered and I, I, I pulled back and decided to go perfect bound instead. Well, so that's my, that was my biggest uh, uh, thing is I wanted a saddle stitch uh, zine, something that's very compact, but we just kept riding and couldn't <laughs> stop. And unfortunately we're, we're actually, we're we're pushing it pretty good. Um, we're probably gonna go uh, perfect bound and and get all glued together. But you can still do you can still do uh, staple bound. There was like I can't remember who it was. What I found is different printers will yeah. will yeah. So some can do that much. Some can't. Right. I, I mean, a um, little background on on me is I'm a uh, a hobbyist bookbinder. So I mean, I could do. Uh... I could do the I could do ninety six pages myself if I wanted to, but um, we we reached out to our printer and they were like, "We're having trouble with," I think they said sixty four pages or, or something, and I was like, "Oh, that's not good to hear." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think for most of them that is. Yeah, uh, it, it seems to be the the the, the limit. Mine was hitting a uh, hundred. It hasn't been printed yet, but uh, not mm -hmm. the one that's currently, but one that's forthcoming. It, it hit over a hundred, and I, I was, you know, I was pretty much going to do that no matter what. And I just thought this is dumb. I'm I'm well past the limit of sanity. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just, but I, but you're but you're still within eighty because I think if your paper's thin enough, I think you 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 could get by with that. That is correct, but. Uh little peek behind the curtain 80 is is us being pretty 
modest. <laughs> I oh. think. It... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're probably going to end up at ninety six yeah. or so. Yeah, uh, or or so. Yeah, so or so. The feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we we've we've planned for that, and it's not going to be a, a huge surprise or anything like that. So, have so. you thought about just doing? And but this dries up the cost considerably. But have you thought about just splitting it into two zines? Physical no, products. It's not. So the problem is, is it's all one town, and so if I split, it's not. It's not necessarily like it's the story itself is not very long. You can have a player run through or you can have a group of players run through it i mean i had one of my playtest groups run through it in, in two and a half hours the problem is is <laughs> that's completely variable on hooks and and what the players deem necessary it's not there's no continuation of the story to, to really split it into two i suppose you could uh you could have like a the problem is is i don't think there's any way to, for our particular story to um, exist within two books, uh, it, maybe I understand, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So my first project, it was it, it turned up being bigger, and so my solution was to split it into three, which kind of worked, but it it, it I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> trick someone into buying two zines, and like I think if I had little vignettes of stories it would work but yeah what with, with beyond deep you know because we we have this mine right that's multi-levels with creepy creatures in it and you know this necromancer who's kind of letting his workers die and then raising them up for cheap labor and everything um and some of these you know story ideas and then well you know a mine needs a a mining town around it and a company town and so it became kind of this bigger story um but then we ended up with you know seven explorable locations in town and all these npcs and items and a bestiary of you know creatures so so there's a lot that you could kind of pull and repurpose or drop into an existing campaign but you know a, as a as a creation, it kind of exists as this one large thing that, you know, all that stuff's folded inside of. Yeah, for a uh, thing that's upcoming, I, I thought about doing a zine. I thought I'd just make it bigger and that would solve the problem, but I ended up making more use of the space. And so it just took up a certain amount of space. It really didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's yeah. been Chris's goal with uh, telling me it's going to be 80 pages. So we don't add yet another location or although yeah. he's pretty excited that he he might get to add you know a couple more critters in there so we'll see uh, yes i'm i'm very stoked on more monsters and maybe a couple more items also yeah so and everybody just... loves monsters and items i suppose yeah absolutely who doesn't love it's just a couple more pages well yeah, it's just yeah. a couple <laughs> more pages <laughs> and it's only and one now, page now you are where we monster. are yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's wafer thin. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just one wafer thin mint. Please, sir. Just one wafer thin. Oh, man. So, this whole thing is um, so I'm not a, a, I'm not a Mork Borg or uh, person, uh, not again it. I just, it's just, um, I haven't bought into by, you know, I know this, I, I understand the setting. It's kind of like it's in hell. Is this, is this in that kind of implied setting or is this something that's just set aside? from the normal work so it is, it is in the setting i we wrote it to be inside of the world that they provide but we outlined pretty clearly at the beginning that you could kind of plop this into just about any setting um i mean if you went sci-fi you'd have to do a couple of tweaks but it would work pretty much anywhere yeah, if you've got a dark fantasy setting, uh, it'll probably work in there. But it is, it references like the Psalms from Morkborg and, you know, the, some specific events that happen in the setting. Uh, so it is, you know, grounded kind of in the world of, of Morkborg, uh, which is a pretty fun, crazy world. Well, the, the sci-fi thing now actually has to be intrigued. <laughs> it's like, what if the yeah. bodies start falling apart? What do you do to fix them? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, we have a zombie that's in a containment suit 
it just so happens that it's modeled after an old diving suit. I mean, you could easily turn that into some sort of cyborg creature. Uh, Fairly easy. So, so I, I've seen you got some really nice art going on there. By nice, I mean uh, it's pretty incredible art. Who's who's doing the art for you? So that's a a, a friend of mine from uh, their name's uh, Paula Casa. Uh, uh, they are from Brazil originally. They moved here to be with their now wife, and um, they've been drawing forever. But this is their first. Uh, real foray into anything published or any any anything sort of like that they they live off of commissions so i'm pretty psyched to get them into a world that they've been trying to get into for a while their art style has a lot of facets i mean i've seen them draw a uh chicken wizard that's pretty whimsical and (laughs) and lovely and then we got um we got some gross monsters coming up so pretty pretty excited yeah it's really great to have you know you know getting your art i mean that's definitely the hard part especially starting out so it looks like you've kind of hit out of the park at least with the art so far so you know kudos to to your friend and uh be able to to work that out um and it's nice being able to have something fun enough that you can you know everybody can you can at least walk away with people getting paid <laughs> if you you don't always yeah. get paid what you want, but at least it's a start and you know that well, and, people. And are that's been paid. my goal for sure is to make sure yeah. that um, art for sure. Like I used to do freelance web design and freelance graphic design. So I definitely know what it's like to be a, a gig artist and how hard it is. So that was a, a big thing going in for me, uh, especially when you're doing a, a zine based on workers rights. You kind of yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. You better treat everybody decently. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, give me 10, 10 pieces of art for a, a little Caesar's hot and ready. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, but, but you that. get plenty of exposure though. Hey, exposure, exposure yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I, I was a, a musician for a long time when I was much younger, and yes, yeah, it's that same ball game. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, uh, you're 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 fighting to get out there, but also sometimes you got to stand up and get paid and work with people who respect artists. So, uh, yeah, our, we were joking actually the other day, Wes and I. You know, because we were like, Casa, Casa might walk away from this project making the most money out of the, oh, the three of us. Baby, in the yeah, head, absolutely. You know? well. <laughs> By far. Um, yeah. I'm okay but, with that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, in well, fact, right. I'm, I'm quite it's happy just, with it. <laughs> it's a real person. And you can say, yeah, this person maybe even needs us, you know, more than I do. So yeah. it's it's kind of uh, right. It is nice that you can actually be a blessing to other people uh, through this. Well, not yeah. to mention, I mean, you've seen our, our cover art. It's it's good. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> not well, to not to toot uh, their own horn, but well, I, what I'm I will say is, impressed. it's the. I mean, it definitely fits. It, it fits in perfectly with the Mark Borg. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's. I think the you know that's. It it, it seems to me that like certain other ones there's a lot of variability and you can still kind of name i mean 5e has, has its own feel it seemed like osc can can go a lot of different directions and still be all right um but but it seems like mork borg kind of it it needs to definitely have a certain feel i think i'm assuming from an outsider you know in order to that's what people are wanting that's probably the expectation i think yeah there's definitely more of a aesthetic to mork borg um and and even in us we're we're kind of in that aesthetic and a little adjacent to it you know um we're kind of stretching that aesthetic a a little bit outside of the box you mean making it a little bit more readable and usable yeah exactly (laughs) correct (laughs) and a little more like graphic feel to some of the you know the art that's coming out and everything too but i mean i love Mork, mork borg like even the core book it's almost like an art book as much as it is you know a rule book so um so you you go in knowing that and kind of what the world you get to play with looks like well and i think sometimes there's is a thing that can be made that can be a thing and that it's something that somebody just people always go back to and draw from but not necessarily copy yeah yeah absolutely and yeah it's funny that you said about osc too because that like 
going in, I would have thought it was more focused, um, but it's kind of like all over the place, you know. Yeah, look at um, it's evolving. Uh, yeah, I mean, you look so at many a black and white ink drawings that I can look at. So, <laughs> well, I think yeah. part of it too is I think Gavin is kind of taking it into more of a. I'm going to make my 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 take on this is kind yeah, of for a sure. little bit more whimsical, kind of old, like maybe 1800s fantasy feel. Yeah, it, and it then moved on from a a hack to its own own thing for sure. But I think other people who are utilizing it, they it can be traditional. You know, it's it's definitely it, it still follows that same path. So I think, you know, it would be interesting. I. It'd be interesting to see with uh, other products that come out how it's going to further evolve. Um, but uh, let's see. I don't know. But but even going back to the art, it's like I was on Twitter, and there's a so there's pretty, uh, uh, peculiar uh, ruins. I utilizing their their stock art um, from their Patreon for the, for the zine, and uh, as mentioned somebody who's an artist said, "Hey, you know." there's artists out here like myself who will, if we like a project, you know, we'll, we'll, um, cause my part of my tweet was us saying, Hey, you know, thanks for making this affordable. And, um, basically, and he's like, well, there's, there are other artists out there who, uh, like us, we will, you know, lower for, for small projects. And, and that my response was, well, the hard part is getting those two together and me as a direct, you know, I'm directing for this, my project, I feel like a scumbag trying to go from artist to artist, trying to, to yeah. lowball them. <laughs> it's like it's... agreed. It, it is while yes, artists will do that. It, it is hard to like hat in hand, walk up to someone who's also hat in hand and be like, Hey, <laughs> uh, I will pay for McDonald's if you draw this. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I yes. absolutely agree. So, you know, I, from my take so far has been, you know, I will I will ask somebody what what they what you know they charge, and if it's too much that I can pay, I will just say, you know, thank you. Right now, I can't afford it, but you know, I will definitely give you mine in the future. And uh, if they don't respond back, then I'll maybe go back to them in the future. Maybe not, but I'm you know at least don't feel like I'm hanging because you know they they're trying to feed their families or trying to make rent or whatever it is, and I don't want to minimize their work but boy it's so hard for us to create a create an object that is so art i don't say it's art dependent but it is art necessary uh, i think in order for it to be anywhere successful well and that's like another thing uh being art somewhat art dependent you want to you, you know you don't want to offer someone hey i'll give you 500 bucks and then you're um you know your book makes ten thousand dollars and <laughs> and you're like wait a minute <laughs> yeah so and it's oh, hard yeah. to it's hard to also convince an artist like i don't particularly go with the tactic of uh i'll give you a percentage of the profits or anything and you know maybe that works for some people and and that's cool um but like i would hate to be like yeah you get ten dollars at the end of this and, and yeah yeah it's, it's definitely it, a hard a hard place to travel for sure yeah it's 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 a balance like you said because you know as an independent creator you're also you know putting a lot of time and a lot of effort into what you're doing and you're you know cramming a lot of small numbers together and and small margins you know at the end of the day but you want to make the best product and like you said you know role playing games especially require a lot of art aesthetic you know sometimes to communicate a feel so you, you need to be able to capture that and sometimes that's you know starting with a really great cover and maybe two or three or four pieces that kind of really carry over you know what's going on in the game and then moving on from there to see you know how much more you know well uh, like we're working with casa we were like this is kind of the bare minimum of what we need and we will pay you, you know what I mean? This much for it. Uh, but we'd love to do more. So 
as the project scales, we're going to bump up our art budget, you know, and at this point we've doubled our original art budget. Uh, and so, you know, we're, we'll keep Casa busy for, you know, a, a little while, which is, you know, great for them and great for us, but it was finding that beginning point, you know what I mean, that kind of made it the most fair, but maximized, you know, what was going on. Yeah, and that's that that is key. Um, and I for during the Madlands, I just I didn't know how it was gonna be. We just uh we just split it all evenly. Um that's how we did it, which worked out okay. Um but it, yeah, it's it, great when it works out. I mean, I think that's a really cool I wish I wish my future projects would work that way. Well, the problem is is it it sort of left everything in kind of, <laughs> for that particular project what to do with it in the future left it kind of ambiguous now because right. it, it, it created a math problem that I, I don't know how to solve. I'm sure people would be fine. If I discussed it, but uh, it's just like, okay, now. Yeah. Do it's I give all you share, 50 cents off like, of each book or what's going on? And yeah. So anyhow, it's, it's, I think for a single, for a single use project that you don't want to go too much further, or if you, and I, I can work it out with people. It's not a problem if I needed to, but it's, you know, how do you go forward? That's a problem because really ultimately you kind of want to have ownership of it. Otherwise it just turns into something kind of weird, but, but anyway, but yeah, I think the idea of right. A, a percentage, uh, especially if it's not like even then it's definitely a lot more. Yeah. The smaller the percentage, the more risk there is, especially for a small project. Right. Absolutely. And it's, but I think the other thing too, it's, there's another, I had um, uh, um, Brad Murray on and he, um, it never went to, 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 to the, um, it never got uh, published, but it, it, one of the artists came on as, as basically, a, you know, as being a, a co-creator and was treated that way because they wanted the art and the, the text to work together. Mm. But, but it's, it's hard right, because the margins, because I'm looking even at my Kickstarter numbers. And you subtract because I I didn't mean to. I really was going to put all my shipping into the backer kit, but some reason I don't know what happened. I put the I put shipping into the backer into the Kickstarter, <laughs> and so. But we start taking out the your ship. Do you, you guys have shipping in your in your uh, in your? In yeah, your, we yeah. have shipping in our Kickstarter only uh, because yeah. our final product is like pretty concise of how much it's going to weigh even with the expansion and stuff like that so we were able to figure it out with enough margin to you know not eat it on the end um but yeah if you have any add-ons it's a nightmare <laughs> oh for the for for uh for the kickstarter yeah oh for the shipping yeah and that's yeah, yeah. so what i was going to do is just charge basically you know that's where i was all going to do on the backer because i do have some add-ons but it definitely um but we subtract out your shipping and you subtract out your, you know, your Kickstarter, you take out your printing, you start taking out your art. Um, it, it doesn't take too long to, to start seeing. It. <laughs> yeah. It's that Mickey Mouse, uh, Donald Duck shaving the, uh, the meat incredibly thin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, get this much and you get this much. Yeah. And my, my goal, my secret goal, because Zach uh, reminded me that everybody has secret goals, not the, the ones that are published, but right. Right. I think I'm going to get the point where I could, when it's all said and done, have paid everybody to do every single part of this zine for the most part, except for running doing the Kickstarter. Nice. And so that's where it's like, that's, that's where I'm awesome. hoping to be where I can, you know, and, and pay every, everybody that's doing works getting paid. There's no, that's not happening. But I mean, as far as I wrote a lot, I did the layout and, you know, it's like, well, if I need to, I could pay somebody at that point. So, and it was like, you guys are actually doing pretty good too, um, as well for your project. Yeah, we're getting to the point where we're like, okay, maybe we can pay someone to do, to do maps and stuff like that. That's kind of beyond where we're at right now but um that's where we're, we have the same sort of thought process of well i i'm doing layout and chris and i are writing and chris is editing and so you know it would be nice to be able to pay someone to do that but <laughs> especially if you're gonna do 12 zines a year no. oh, Jesus. yeah that's oh god i cannot believe i can't believe he said that oh, man. <laughs> 12 yeah. zines. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, I, I, like I said, I saw that and I saved that episode and, you know, <laughs> said it to my friend Josh, who I'd been talking to because he wants to do 12 zines a year. So, insane. Yeah, I'll be like, maybe I'll do one or two of them with you, buddy. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, so what brawls together? What's, what's the, 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 the moment where you guys said, aha, we're going to do this thing? Uh, I Googled. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's gonna sound. Oh, my Google Home is now listening. Stop it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, but I literally I no stop. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> um, but basically, I looked up on the internet how to do the dang thing, and I was like, oh, it's not quite as hard as I thought it was because it it seemed out of reach for sure. Um. And then it got to a point where it's like, oh, it is much harder than I thought it was. And so I was like, I, I called up upon Chris and I was like, please help me. Um. <laughs> well, because at first I was like, I'm going to make a, you know, a 10 page zine that I'm going to do at home. I'm going to print on my laser printer and easy peasy. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Now it's, you know, 80 pages and. and uh, I would be hard pressed to to continue that. And then I was like, I can't put it out under my name now that it's so big. Uh, Chris, give me a name. He sent me <laughs> half a dozen, and I was like, this one. And he's like, cool, I like that one. <laughs> so, so Chris wasn't the voice of reason. He's just an enabler. Uh, he well, okay. <laughs> so he is <laughs> the best of both worlds in that regard. Uh, literally for the first. I don't know, three weeks. I kept coming back to him. I was like, I think we can do a hardback book. And he's like, no, buddy, come on. Look at those numbers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, yeah, was, we could do it. And I was like, uh, and then finally it clicked with me and it was like, okay, we're, we're not, we're not that good. We're not, but by and large, uh, I think the community and, um, uh, websites are at a point where it's fairly easy to break in if you're realistic that is the hardest thing yeah. you have to do um there's been a couple of um kickstarters during this zine quest where people are i think a little lofty in their in their goals but then there's also people who are like completely um i can't think of it right now uh but there was one that wanted like six hundred dollars and they're at 5k or something like that it's wild to me um but then there you know there's just a wild variance but pretty much um i was like i'm just gonna do this dang thing and i, and I talked to chris about it and he's like yeah i think we can do this dang thing so yeah like there's well. one dude from england who's got uh it's only like seven pounds for a 80 page adventure and he's only charging like seven wow. pounds sterling <laughs> and i i, I text him i'm like are you sure seven pounds for shipping? Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. I, All right. <laughs> I have anxiety right now. Just I know. Just <laughs> thinking about that. <laughs> I was wondering, it's true. Like, are you really, really, really sure? Yeah. <laughs> because we looked up shipping for uh, UK and we're like, nope, can't do that. It's no. Twenty five pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I shipped, so during the Madlands, it cost me the same amount of money within a dollar or two to ship to Canada, to ship to uh, to uh, England, and to ship to Indonesia. All were the same amount of money. It's Wild. Like, <laughs> it was like $27. Yeah. And yeah. it was, uh, and so this guy... And then he's like, you know, and I, I, I really hope this. I hope he's right. I hope he's right. Yeah, you know, but I, great if he is. Yeah, because but I'm thinking it's like he's getting all this money and he's like doing well and like doing ads. I'm thinking, buddy, you better put a, you better save this money in case things don't go right. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's intense. Yeah. So no, but the thing is, is you know, he's he apparently looks like he has a great product. He's doing real well as far as the number of sales, and a lot of people are in the U.S. I just hope the success isn't his failure. So, yeah, but. that that's the danger, you know. A lot of times yeah. is, you know, do you miscalculate oh, your of, shipping? Or, that's doing so great. Yeah. yeah, do you miscalculate your shipping, or do you 
add too many things that are cool on your, you know, stretch goals or do you kind of success your way into to failure, you know? So, you know, we have kind of had that discussion too of keeping things very realistic, you know, <laughs> <Yes>. really <laughs> working those numbers every think time. Think of the cool so. ribbon, ribbon bookmarks that we could have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was a fun time period that was like we i mean we really could look it's only this much it's a, it's a hard cover <laughs> it's got a built-in ribbon yeah, yeah. we could do some foiling yep it, it, so and cheap we, it's yeah. only ten dollars a book yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> well that's the other thing i did with journey of the madlands is i i i sold it for 20 i can't remember what it cost me to print it but it was kind of high so the margins weren't great it made money but but to sell it for retail it wouldn't make any sense because i wouldn't if you have to sell it for 50 percent yeah it's just like you start doing the math that's it's another like, thing i looked at was retail and i was like no way <laughs> i think what you can do is there are people who will uh if you can get your book cheap enough uh might check you don't have one for merchants do you no okay yeah so what i did is if you buy five it's it's 50 percent off but you know not a lot of people took that but you know i i think in the long term if you get some people are interested you can do an overrun and you know it's something um that's yeah. kind of our our goal actually is, is to have we also had um a local game store donate quite a quite a bit and so we're gonna stock them and um we have some some good uh relationships with some other local stores so for our first go i think it was a, a nice turnout um to not to not go straight retail um because i definitely thought about that i can't, i definitely pitched that idea but it just turned out that we would have to raise our overall price for for regular backers and then it just became right. kind of like a headache yes 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 yeah it's uh and, and that's what's hard it, it's the pricing thing too it's like you you don't know and you can't you can't view into all possible realities to determine which <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> if only though right if only i could doctor strange this for a little bit yeah be great speaking of reviewing all realities i looked up our, our us on on kick track and i was like it tells us we're gonna make 12 grand and i thought you, you got he's got to make you got to make it was like sweet yeah <laughs> if you would have checked it sooner you'd have made even more money you lost money uh, by wild. checking up too late too yeah. late yeah <laughs> there's like schrodinger's uh kick track yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, have I locked it into the reality though? At least at twelve, we'll find out. Yes. Yeah, I mean that'd be great. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be happy with five. Yeah, it. Well, it. I'm going to make an assumption, and uh, I'm assuming you're planning on doing additional uh, Morkborg stuff in the future. I don't know. I mean, most of our uh, next ones are kind of branching out from Morkborg because we fell down this rabbit hole of. Uh, like cool third party people that <laughs> that are doing their own thing. I mean, I'll definitely I'll I'll ride another Morkborg adventure in my sleep if 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 it means I can back or if I can create another cool project on top of like a a more artsy independent project. But um, we got a couple of things lined up that I think are going to be uh, a little more independent. Uh, as much as I love Morkborg and. Uh, if it's my aesthetic as a person but yeah yeah i i wouldn't rule it out but um and i'd actually like to do more more for it but looking at the stuff we kind of have lined up and in the works right now um it's all different you know different third-party systems and systems and ideas of our own as well um so we'll we'll, we'll be branching out a bit you know what you're talking about like a finding the name for the company spooky bill games right yeah um, you know we were we were laughing because one of the weighing decisions behind that one was you can put out something that's like kind of creepy and the name fits but spooky bell's kind of a silly name also you know so if i want to put out something lighthearted, we can also right. do that uh you know and kind of do a, like a, a wide variety episode. 
Yeah. Right. The yeah the the guy does the uh, the the Maccabeans or the doing the Maccabeans. It's like mm-hmm. he's yeah. into the, his logo and his stuff is like he's very much into splatter. It's like yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. <laughs> you're right. That probably doesn't always go so well if you're wanting to do a, you know, something that's more young child family friendly kind of thing. Yeah. Well, the thing yeah. is, you could also just do a Morkborg every year too. Just do one, and you might have like a consistent audience for that. Yeah, I mean, I think I've there's a lot to that. It. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot to, especially this being our first Kickstarter project, right? You know, it's kind of setting the tone. Um, so as long as we could do something that's really cool to us and has maybe some interesting ideas in it, and you know, we can do the kind of art and production we want out of it. Um, then it'd be great to keep doing that, you know, whether that looks like a project or two year in more work. Because uh, also then you connect with those backers that you've already established and, you know, with people that have kind of a- attached to that thing that you've made already. Um, so I, 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 w- I would I would like to do that, honestly. And also you get the sick uh, mentally. <laughs> it's like, I, so me personally, like me, <laughs> yeah. it, where you want to just continually buy the next thing if it matches the first thing yes yes yeah. <laughs> so there's uh because there's a morkborg um what is it 30 days of morkborg that originally i believe they were all one one sheet adventures for morkborg and now they're putting them out in three semi long form adventures per book and they're up to volume three and i'm just chomping at the bit to get the next one and the next one and the next one um <laughs> So I think you can definitely fall into that in in Morkborg, um, but I think uh, both Chris and I want not not to not that there's anything wrong with um, you know just the depressing Morkborg adventure after the depressing <laughs> Morkborg yeah. adventure, but we much like this one, we we tried to um, put something in it that expressed our views and uh, was a bit more intellectual in some aspects uh, um, and it's not for everyone uh, by by far but i think that's part of our our charm is is uh elevating something that you know a doom metal rpg into something that could be um a long-form campaign for sure plus yeah. it also allows me to still make really weird gross work work stuff to get it right. all out of my that's system the, you know that's the coolest thing is, <laughs> is, is on one page where we're talking about workers rights and unionization and then on the next page he's got this uh awful um land uh what <laughs> angler fish is the word i was looking for a land angler fish that takes a, a corpse and uses it as bait and it's horrible and oh that's cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> A flesh esque, uh, <laughs> so gross. So, so how, how do you divide up the writing? I mean, it's that it seems to be uh, for an adventure. It seems to be kind we, of we didn't. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we did. It happened, um, but it just we just kind of you're working on this. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go work on this. Uh, so is it like have, the railroads where someone came from California heading east, someone from east, and you kind yeah, of helped the very railroads much. meet in the middle? Uh, actually, the first thing that <laughs> yeah. Chris worked on was the final dungeon in in the in the game, <laughs> and it just spoke to him more because he he wanted to make the creatures and the items, um, and and I wanted to focus on the stuff that I had brought to the table, um, and he would toss out cool ideas and I'd be like, that's cool. And then I'd write it up and I'd toss out ideas and he'd say, that's cool. And I'd, and he'd write it up. Um, Chris has also been uh, invaluable in the fact that he can edit my um, poor writing style. (laughs) I I, I definitely, that's one thing I want anyone who's listening to this to take away, get a damn editor, (laughs) get, get an editor uh of some sort even if even if they're part of the project um even if they're just proofreading what you wrote get an editor uh, yeah it, somebody it, says important. you can't prove you can't proofread your own work it's not no it's, it's not impossible. proofreading <laughs> yeah because yeah, you, you already know what it's supposed to say so it, yes that's obviously what it says is what you wanted it to say so yeah it's tough you know i mean it is funny right because i've worked kind of editing some small projects for a couple of other people before um, 
and uh, and then writing a bunch of stuff and going over it a million times, you know, um, and then sending it to someone and, you know, getting the red pen back. It's always fun. And I was like, no, I red pen you. You don't red pen me. What's going on here? <laughs> but like, like you said, when, when it's your own stuff, then it's, you know, it's it's harder to separate. So. Yeah, it is. I know. <clears throat> If, you know, there are tools I, I, I've been uh, picking up um, pro writing aid. Uh, they had a lifetime subscription for like 250 bucks or something. So it seems worth it. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, as Chris, yeah, Fug- I was like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know. As, as we furiously Google on, in the background. It, it, occasionally, pro, it, and I think Grammarly, it probably works similarly. There's a few others. They're all. And occasionally pro writing aid, they will, they will do a, they'll do like a, a promotion for a short time where you can just, it's like $80 a year, but that has helped me out. It, it, it doesn't replace having a real person, you know, but it definitely helped me out with areas I, I didn't realize I was kind of messed up on. So it's just like, <laughs> yeah, if you could at least get it. 80 percent of the way there yeah. before you send it off to somebody it's nice you know if it'll take at least half of my commas out um oh I'm it's fine. good about the commas but <laughs> i like what i do is i usually do multiple multiple passes yeah and, but one of the big ones i get to is is the readability um for sure and try and work on that one that one's not always very clear what it is it's not always clear why it's not considered like some paragraphs I think are long and drawn out and it will be terrible, but it actually, or have long sentences and it'll be green and something that's shorter and tighter will be red. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It's wild. That's like uh, when I used to do web design, there's a, a similar process for, for SEO for search engine optimization. And it's just like, why is, why is this coming up green on my, on my checker? I don't, I don't get it, but uh <laughs> Yeah, it is kind of weird, but I, I would recommend, you know, and for me, it's like, you know, for a copy editor, before I get it over, I want to make sure I get it, you know, right. They're not there to fix my my monstrous problems. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're... That's another hard thing I've found is uh, finding someone, as much as I love input, it's finding someone to only look at the writing and not to try to tell me what i should be <laughs> is is hard uh i've lucked out on this project uh that that chris just kind of rearranges my words and and gets it readable <laughs> um but yeah, yeah i've one gal I've used in the past and she does a really good job it, she just looks at as far as readability nice. you know not not but there's times too it's where i've, I've had someone who i thought was going to get a little more direction as far as just you know the way it's de- like a developmental editor but i didn't re- end up being more of a copy editor not really what i was wanting you know sometimes you want somebody to write just to 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 see where you're unclear and there's other people you don't want to say it's like does this really make sense as an overall system <laughs> for sure yeah I, I imagine that's a hard tight rope to walk yeah and i think too it depends you know if you're writing fiction it's one thing but you're writing an adventure that's it's it's not really fiction it, it's, it's like there's... a technical manual yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah for, for sure uh i found that incredibly hard and we we found that um actually in our latest play tests that we were um we we're like oh wow we missed some big like instructional moments that will help our uh adventure flow and i mean i guess that's why you do play testing but um i found it kind of fascinating that we thought we were pretty pretty tight and pretty ready to go and then we're like oh i guess we didn't include that so well i think too it's just all it takes is just a the you know because the random element of of the player Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, absolutely (laughs) you know you you know you don't know what a player is going to do or how they're going to look at a thing i mean that's one of the joys and the fun of role playing in general but when you're putting something out there for the world that you've written then there's a a lot of variability in how people are going to interpret it. Um, right. You think your clues are very clear. You think the direction is very clear, but, um, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. And, and then with a, something like this, um, that's, you know, kind of meant for a GM to run an adventure out of it uh, and, and take all of these things. Then the other thing, like 
we have someone who's not us because so far the play tests have been us running it you know and kind of one of us taking notes and the other person running it and then kind of huddling afterwards and going through stuff and getting feedback from players right now we're moving into where we're having other people run it you know and getting just their blind feedback now of you know this made sense this doesn't make sense this is how my players i would have liked this um so it's kind of stepping away and letting it live a little bit on its own with some other people before it gets out in the wild i think is is very important yeah it goes back to that editing uh, uh, thing you were saying earlier chris of of course it makes sense to you you wrote the words and like that's how it's supposed to read so of course you're going to be able to understand um i did find that i confused myself on a couple of things even that that i had written so that's good that i was able to figure that out <laughs> <laughs> What was what was past West saying here? Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. I was like, "What? Why did I, I put that in there?" If yeah. I could only talk to West, pa the past West, <laughs> yeah. only he was available thinking? to call. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I got I I, I told Chris at the beginning of this, uh, I kind of go into a fugue state when I'm writing, and, and just sort of yeah. clack at the keyboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so I guess we'll go a little side detour here um so writing like for you two i mean, you got two different people here right like what's your how like for writing like what's what's the way you handle it what's what do you do like time of day do you listen to things uh do you plan things out then write or just write to see what happens i mean what's what's the way it works for you guys Ooh, that's that's an interesting one um yeah we we kind of had even we were both writing on things we had at least a different outline of kind of these are all the parts of stuff that we want, you know, so that way we could be like, hey, man, I'm going to hop and I'm going to work on this today. Uh, Wes might say, you know, oh, OK, well, I'm going to go work on this stuff and then we can go back and kind of look at the parts we've been working on. But we had a decent outline going in of what we needed. And as a product developed, you know, we would keep kind of a project management doc of all the stuff that was going on. Um, but for writing. I'm like a quiet writer, you know, like I, I want to sit down and I don't want a lot of music and a lot of other stuff going on um, because my brain gets, starts getting too much input. It'll just wander, you know, away off into somewhere else. Um, but I kind of like to know what I'm going to get into. And then usually it's just a momentum, you know, so uh, I, I'm a late night writer more than a daytime writer. You know, so I'll, if I can get going at 9 or 10 p.m., whether I like it or not, the brain spinning, then it might be two or three in the morning, you know, um, where it just kind of keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. Uh, and then I do my more disciplined writing during the day where I, you know, sit down and say, I need to edit these three passages and make these two items and clean this stuff up. Um, so the creative side of me is the late night side and the, ah. you know, the discipline side of me yeah. is the daytime side. Like Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I unfortunately have no discipline and <laughs> most, so I was just thinking about it. I was like, I pretty much, so I listen to a lot of loud music while I'm writing, but nothing with lyrics that I can readily understand. <laughs> um, oh or, yeah. Or some, no, something that's it. super fast. <laughs> just, just drown. I mean, I, I've also written to, um, I'm, diagnosed adhd so i i kind of know what i need to do to get myself in that space and i mean i've even written to um uh what's it called brown noise which is a, a very ambient just like drowning sound uh be because Wait, drown when you say drowning sound oh so what do you mean <laughs> it's not the sound of people drowning okay uh, yeah. <laughs> but it is so while ambient it is very it's not it's hard to say that it's loud it's very encompassing it's very uh, i would i would recommend looking it up because it's 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 kind of hard to describe as far as uh but it's it is an ambient noise it's kind of staticky kind of there are a couple variations uh thereof but there's um a lot of bass and i got these awesome uh headphones that have little haptic feedback motors in them that just like buzz my head um wow and yeah <laughs> it's it's wild like i said it's it's almost like i'm going into a fugue state and just and just like um because that's another thing is uh, uh i'm a big keyboard nut so 
I need some sort of tactile feedback on my keyboard. Um, I I I, I kind of go through most of the switches though, so it, it's not clicky or or tactile per se, but um, something some sort of tactile feedback is is key for me. Uh, and I can kind of write anywhere. Um, but I do need no one to talk to me. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, if my bosses at work are listening to this podcast, you didn't hear this following <laughs> part. But, um, every once in a while, I sneak away. We have a we have a cash office at work, and, and you know I'll sneak away for thirty minutes or so. And uh, luckily, my position affords me to to do this without anyone getting lost. Um, but I'll sit down and just. <laughs> Uh, in dead silence around me but in my headphones just the loudest most uh aggressive sound um a lot of my writing background comes from like freeform role playing and stuff like that so it's very um uh fluid and very very uh, string of consciousness writing um I'll, I'll pick a target i'll be like i want to write um this building and i'm going to describe all these all these different rooms and i may look up one or two references uh, uh, if it's like a real life building like a church or something like that but other than that it's it's largely improv and freeform and that's why you need an editor because some of my nonsense was <laughs> illegible uh but um I, I could definitely just sort of go which is nice yeah it's it's kind of interesting it's number of people just you know how our brains work i mean it's all all different and uh and it's just kind of interesting to see how people solve that that uh it's not always easy i mean people have different tricks people do different things and we all and not all, all but for most we all live lives where we we we're not um uh, we're not independently wealthy that can just pick when we want to do the yeah, thing we that we're go, doing go to a cabin and and write for two weeks or, or whatever yeah or, exactly yeah. Yeah. And so we we got to make it work with it with the time that we have and so it's just uh i just find that that whole thing and just the just the act of writing is just kind of a strange it's just a strange thing you know just making stuff up it's just it's just weird yeah you're you're actively trying to hallucinate and you're <laughs> <laughs> trying trying to capture <laughs> capture the legible bits uh, uh on the page and and not you know you know and and hope that it makes sense in the end that's that that part still eludes me is as i look at what i just wrote and i'm like well obviously this makes sense to me but um you know who who is who's going to uh be like what <laughs> when they when they read a, a specific passage so definitely fascinating yeah it is and so uh so you guys have started this this company uh, and uh, you got plans for the future. So how'd you guys become friends to begin with? I actually don't really <laughs> remember our first meeting. <laughs> um, I know we we met at a game store that's uh, local here. Um, but so where is here? Oh, San Antonio, Texas. Oh, okay, because you yeah. you said you were central, and I thought we well, must be north of me, but you're actually far south. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, very far uh, south. Yeah, it's funny how many San Antonians say Central Texas when we're like a couple hours from the coast. Um, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, South Central uh, for sure. But yeah, um, um, yeah, we met at a. a uh, a game store here and our the first major memory of playing a game with chris was uh somehow i got invited to his house to play uh the sprawl which is uh, powered by the apocalypse um cyberpunk rpg uh really cool um and i don't know man it just kind of evolved from there <laughs> uh he, he showed me some weird um like trash can which is single page uh rpg and then also um ghost lines was really cool it's basically like steampunk uh ghostbusters which is always neat and so yeah um, i i think i'm not positive 
I think we might have first met at Alamo City Comic Con when Nightwatch did the game room. Oh uh, yeah, that is. Oh my God, that is. Yeah. Uh, uh, was... There's a local. Yeah, there's a a, a big Comic Con here in San Antonio. I mean, big for San Antonio. Uh, yeah. You know. But uh, yeah, uh, one of the local game <laughs> stores was in charge of the the tabletop area. Uh, I think that's the first time we met, and then we were later on hanging out at Nightwatch Games here in San Antonio and, um, you know, bumped into each other and said hi and played some games and had mutual friends and, you know, that the that fateful sprawl game, uh, you know, brought a, a few of us together and connected us for, for a while. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's a funny how those those uh, those things can those random events can kind of change things, for you. and especially now that you needed a project done that just kind of cemented it for you, Wes. Right? Oh just yeah, like. for sure. <laughs> well, so that's the funny thing is is um, I would bounce an idea off of, and I mean we're we're pretty close friends. We talk fairly regularly, um, you know, a couple times a week at least. Uh, now that we're doing a project every every hour um yeah <laughs> right um, uh I, I have to constantly be like hey chris if i need to shut up please just tell me <laughs> to, to shut up uh but um yeah no i had totally forgotten about the comic-con uh because you had you had one of your kids with you and what we played lanterns i remember that yeah um, that was wild I hadn't yeah. thought about that. I mainly blocked it out because uh, <laughs> at the time I was walking like three miles because I I was broke at the time and there wasn't any parking anywhere near the convention center. So I will walk three miles to go volunteer for like 12 hours. Uh, like for this, uh, at that point, uh, the game, Nightwatch was only a couple years old and very much uh, a baby and i was just trying to be nice and i way over committed and had some <laughs> hurt feelings about it afterwards but i've largely forgotten about it funnily enough so it's uh, called night watch oh yeah night watch games uh they're they've won um they go to uh, gamma every every year and they won uh like best new game store and stuff like that um they Is now that based have... off of the the books night watch and day watch uh, oddly, no. That'd be cool, though. <laughs> uh, Nightwatch with a, a K N I G H T. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very medieval. Um, their whole whole their their thing is that the inside of their store looks like a medieval like uh dining hall type of deal with big long tables and faux rock walls and stuff like that. And then they recently opened a um a costume store for for because there's several big Texas Renaissance festivals. Um, I never, ever, 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 ever would have guessed that Texas yeah. would right. be able to support right. people in furs and long sleeves. And yeah. <laughs> yes. Wool. Absolutely. And they're insane. And I don't, I this, don't get how they do it. This is not the Texas I remember from my youth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, the uh, Texas Ren Fair just did like what, thirty years, forty years? Yeah, Something crazy. It's, no more it's... than that, fifty years. They were seventies. That blows my freaking mind. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, also not the Texas I grew up in. So yeah, yeah okay. Right. It's like <laughs> yeah, I just think, you know dead armadillos, uh, yep. vast swaths of crabgrass and uh... <laughs> way too many cedar trees for me up in the yeah the hill country yeah. oh man that's good yeah so so you guys are this is your first kickstarter so now you're you know we are i didn't check your and check you in in kick track you're kind of in the, the the point of being in the um we're hitting the bathtub curve I yeah think, i don't think we bottomed out yet uh we were real close on on monday i hadn't seen any anyone out anyone new for uh a little bit but chris hit the socials today and we got like 10 more backers nothing crazy but it it boosted us up past a certain goal which is pretty cool no yeah it's uh you're, you're okay i'm gonna just let you guys know ahead of time uh especially if you're you you can on some days go negative. Yeah. 
Just, just preparing you for this. Yeah, for sure. Uh-huh. We, you know, it's funny, right? We, um, you know, we've been playing around with like Facebook ads and, you know, maybe a, a couple of like banners on websites and Facebook groups and looking at little things, you know, people, as soon as you have a Kickstarter, right? People are like, I'll uh, blast you out to all my followers for $20 or, you know, whatever it is they do. Um, so there's one of those things we were looking into and we said, oh, we'll, we'll throw this a little chunk of money at this sure. and we'll kind of see what happens. And, and we, you know, marked it when it went live. Uh, and then later that day, we we lost one follower, you know. And- <laughs> oh, yes. we're, like, we're like, neat. Oh, you're one of those people. I yeah. Spent, <laughs> I spent $30, $30 to, to watch my account go down by one. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So we, re- we also regained one person, like, almost immediately, which I thought was also funny. But Yeah, which was pretty funny. But, yeah. So do you use the custom tags that you can generate in Kickstarter? No. No. Do, do you do you, you go on, these? sir? Yeah. yeah. So if you go to um if you go to um let me go. I think we got the Zine Quest one because that was automatic. So no, I mean I, the if you go to um I have you project. If you go to the dashboard, uh uh-huh. and then you go down to uh custom referral tags. Right, right. Uh, yes, yes, you, yes, yes. So anytime you send out a link, you can say, you know what, like, like for instance, let's just say for my show notes, which probably won't generate any leads, you could create a customer referral yeah, tag with and analytics, say, yeah, and then, then you go down below, um, or actually above, it will tell you, it will tell you where those re- where the refers, if it's generated from any of those tags, will show up. Yeah, nice. That, that's cool. Yeah, that's something that... we'll definitely have to to utilize in the future yeah, yeah that's something we talked a little bit about was running custom links and stuff to track that stuff better because uh, in the basic campaign kickstarter has a little bit of that i can see what's coming over in general from facebook and discord and you know internally but yeah, having a discrete link <laughs> yeah having a discrete link would be lovely yeah, because it really does. I mean, I don't know there's been any big news, but you can definitely see what you think would be. It, it does kind of either confirm or also it refutes some, some assumptions. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, I'm going to be I'm going to be completely honest and, and uh, reveal something to Chris here. Uh, I used to do SEO work like exclusively with no graphic. So search engine optimization. And so uh, looking at a Google Analytics page makes me want to puke. So <laughs> uh, in the future, I will get over that phobia. But for this one, I was like, ah, let's just see what it, what it can do. And because and, uh, I, I just didn't have the mental capacity. I, I even like looked at, um, you know, several different tracking methods uh, shortly after launch. And I was like, uh, we're kind of past the point of return here. But um, it's definitely... You can fall down a rabbit hole super, super easily and get some real useful data uh, for sure. So, well, what's funny is, you know, I was, I was really keen on doing this. And so I generate my, my first link and I, 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 I uh, post it in RPG zines. Mm-hmm. And then I was going next, was going to go to the old school essentials. And so I generated my first link. And God bless him, uh, John Gilmore. I'd already posted, uh, reposted it in RPG in into the old school essentials before I could post the the custom link. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> like, Ruined. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's okay. <laughs> My analytics. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate you being a good guy, but you're messing yeah. up my data, man. Come on. Now, how will I really know? Yeah, <laughs> that's great. But no, it was a good, it was a good problem to have, but it was just it was just so surprising. I mean, it was kind of um, you know exciting to actually have somebody care that much. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. So, yeah. and, and and that's what will happen, I think, too. As you you guys develop stuff, you'll have people that uh, that will be excited about your stuff and. Um, yeah, we saw our first one in the wild today. Uh, uh, Chris over here screenshotted someone on Twitter. Um, someone someone on Twitter had said, what are you most excited for for Zine Quest? And someone replied with our 
several other projects, but also ours in there. And I was like, <gasps> it's, it's happening. <laughs> it is it is weird, isn't it? That people, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, people are actually paying for this. Like you, you can't think. Dude, totally. <laughs> so so yeah. some guy in the UK was like, hey, uh, can we get a print on demand version? I was like, yeah, you can. <laughs> Let me yeah. uh, figure that out. Uh, so we're going to do for print on demand. Uh, I'm still figuring that out, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh probably drive through maybe lulu um i think the the, the nice thing about drive through the nice thing about drive through is that uh it's all tied in with um pretty much everybody uses that yeah right but you can't do i i can't do but what i can't do is a5 and i can't do um saddle stitch interesting Ooh. but i can with lulu huh. yeah uh. Yeah, I know like Four Against Darkness uses Lulu and there's a couple other people to do their saddle stitch stuff. So I kind Ooh. of poked around in that a little bit. But Drive Through RPG seems to be like the mega lift, you know, yeah. when you look through Kickstarter print on demand stuff. Which is wild because their website is awful. It is. In <laughs> fact, what, I, I tell you what's more awful is the is the publisher back end for it. Yeah, I was oh. looking at it. I was just like <laughs> How am I uh, supposed to figure anything out? Yes. <laughs> it's yeah, man. I, I saw the email after Wes signed up and I was like, I'll just go take a look. And I was like, nope. oh God, why? I looked I at it for phone. about five minutes, Chris, on my phone, and I was just like, I can't do this from a phone. It's not it's not made for that. Yeah. No. And then if you ever put any stuff in the in the community content stuff for like Monty Cook games or whatever, it's it's its own thing too. So it's not even tied to the, i mean there's two different sites for the stuff you're publishing that's your own oh, wild. and stuff yep. you're doing for that and um yeah it, it's it's kind of but teaching us some things here uh, but what's <laughs> even worse but what's worse than that is trying to actually use drive throughs uh um uploading their stuff upload for their, yeah no, for I their, saw that well for the, for doing your publishing for your uh, pro on demand i tried it yeah. once and I, 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 it scared me off. So I think I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try. Lulu. Well, if I, if I figure it out, I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in touch. But you do need to have your your cover separate from your book. Yeah, they're, they're two sense, separate but, files. But, but if you do mix also, them, it's you know it, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, mix them is is interesting. Um, that's who we're we're thinking of finally printing with. Uh, mainly because their their shipping's not insane, and which I don't know how they're. I mean, I'm guessing they just have so much volume that they can just eat it. Um, but uh, also, their return time seems fast, um, even if they were to mess up and have to do it again. Well, but, Zach Zach had an issue where they basically, I think, right before uh, he was going to press, were like, um, "I think like we don't have, we can't make that book for you." <laughs> oh no <laughs> well, that's good to know <laughs> yeah i think he only ran off a paper or that so something happened yeah and they kicked uh, him out and he could get back in the queue but he had to put a new order in that's it was just like it, yeah huh. it was just, it was insane i know somebody else had a problem where they're cutting their books and they yep. were snagging the covers and creating tears on the covers uh, yeah but the two times i've used them i haven't had any problems yeah well and and by and large uh, that's what i've heard as well um so we're we're gonna do a little uh mini test print before we we good go idea hardcore hardcore with them <laughs> and they're and they're uh the customer service is pretty much non-existent yep that's that's what i found um also i find their definitions of what a page is to be confusing <laughs> yeah uh, sheet. They, they, they have sep- yeah well so they have sheet and page but it's also interchangeable. And so that's how we kind of went from a 48. Cause I was thinking a full sheet of paper, right? <laughs> <laughs> but turns out, no, it's, it's pages. <laughs> it's, you know, you get two, four pages per actual sheet of paper, but they use the term sheet and page interchangeably. And it's just not uh, for someone who's familiar with printing it's not intuitive. It's probably more intuitive for for someone who hasn't looked at any other printers, but I don't know. Right. Seems, seems for a wrong. novice, <laughs> it seems to make sense, but if you have any knowledge of what exactly it is to make a book, you're, you're right. Like, they throw you for a loop. <laughs> like, 
that's how we went from 40 48 pages to 96 pretty pretty quickly we were like oh okay uh guess we miscalculated there and um now we have to figure it out but we did the other uh, thing i warn you about them is that um and I, there's some mistakes i made with my pdf uh and you may or may not but my my first one is i uploaded you get in the queue and then they get ready to print it and then all of a sudden they'll kick it back for something <laughs> and it's like okay then you fix that thing then you go back in the queue and then they'll kick it out for something else. Oh, no. And I'm like, why in the world did you not check it for all problems Check first? for all the things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Set aside yeah. a day where you're going to be uploading to mix them every couple of hours. No, uh, you know, you have to reload another day. You, or oh, you another get day. You got to wait like a week or two weeks before you get Oof. back in, before they tell you you've messed up again. That's so, awful. Noted. Yeah, so that may be a problem. It may, it, yep. the, the part of the problem too is I was, I knew enough to 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 be dangerous. Yep. So <laughs> I learned about rich black, uh -huh. and then I made all my text rich black in three different zines. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's like no, you don't do that. You don't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I, I found about this thing and I want to use it. It's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I just never knew such a thing existed, yeah, I would yeah. be perfectly fine. Well, and see, I think that's a problem with Mixum is if if you know if you try to help them, it messes up their workflow. And because one of the most scathing reviews I've read was from someone who like legitimately knew you know the printing process and. and how it was normally done and they tried to go in there with the idea that they were going to upload these certain files in a certain format and it turns out no it's just quick and dirty with mixum and and they kind of do all the stuff that they need to do on the back end which is interesting um i don't know how helpful it is we'll see i guess we'll find out <laughs> yeah i mean the, the volume that they put out is incredible so yep. it's it's but it i'm really not is. necessarily playing i haven't i haven't figured out i you probably should figure out my printer too because i probably was wanting... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> especially since i was wanting to send out for a proof copy by the end of the month so we'll yeah uh... <laughs> amazing that's great yeah the I'm uh so I'm levi's glad. got a a uh big guy chongus i don't know if you've mm -hmm. uh followed. he's got a printer in uh i think alabama hmm. and uh, he's had real good luck with them i've i thought about using them once and they're they're very the price are reasonable and they're also very quick they're very their customer service was like incredible as far as getting back with me and and um hmm. and if it was the right person they get the right person and that person responded to me on the same day so um, I forget the name, but uh, one of his latest updates, I think he makes mention that I might might give them a try too, or try somebody yeah. local. I don't know. It's hard. Yeah, it's it's hard to 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 figure out. Well, why is this company so cheap? <laughs> and then... Yes, <laughs> and they, and they, and I've never had any problems. There's a lot of people that never had any problems. Yep. Um, but it's just, but there, there are different things that get sacrificed like customer service. And yeah. I think if you're wanting to, and also I was talking to a bigger printer who for some reason, just, I don't know what happened if my stuff went junk, my junk, but he's very knowledgeable. It was nice talking to him because he understood where, why you can have tearing on your, like what's what paper you need, what like coating on, I don't know like coating on your cover. So if you got a thicker book, having a coating on your cover helps lubricate the the shear as it cuts through the paper. Right. So, I mean, there's all sorts of like tr tricks by people that are, that are very experienced, you know, where you might get somebody else. that's just all they're doing is punching numbers in a machine and it just craps them out at the end and yeah. they put them in a box and ship them to you. Right. Well, and as a, not to bring up my hobby again, but as a, as a book binder hobbyist, it was a little, um interesting the kind of lack of options on on mixum as far as because i i've looked at even working for for printers before and the um the paper options alone <laughs> um, but i understand that they're trying to uh sort of expedite and 
to some extent idiot proof their their process so that you know they don't have to work so personally with each um project and they can just sort of get it out uh out the door but yeah it's fascinating that's kind of cool that you found someone who um w was willing to talk to you about the tricks and and of the trade so to speak yeah and so it's just and i think if you can find somebody local it's just finding somebody that's at a, a reasonable price too so well i'll get that figured out i got i got uh, i guess a, a few weeks so anyway i think we're probably hitting the uh, end of the space time continuum nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I can, just I can like that i can feel myself getting simultaneously older and younger at the same time. yeah it's kind of weird isn't it <laughs> <laughs> and uh and also, so your Kickstarter is going till the end of the month, correct? Correct. Yes. So yeah, is mine be too? So I yeah, I wish you guys the best of luck as we're as we're running down that same path together. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Best of luck to, to you, see. man. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I'll um, and uh, you guys uh, like say you got any questions or anything, don't don't hesitate to uh, even reach out to me. Uh, in the meantime, appreciate that a lot. Yeah, we do. It was good. Dude. We're, I've already have three three new tabs open in our <laughs> browser <laughs> just, just from this podcast. So, well, pretty much most people that ever come on this podcast are even if the um, even if the the subject of the of the of the podcast is different, it almost somehow ties into this kind of stuff. So, because yeah, nice. it's pretty much everybody, we're all in the same together. We're all trying to figure it out. Yeah. So we just don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that is, you know, and, and it's like we talked a little earlier, but like it's a very supportive community. That's what I've noticed, yeah. you know. Uh, with, yeah, exactly. Because, you know, I've been in others that aren't, but with kind of the independent tabletop role playing community, uh, so far I've had really great experiences. People share knowledge and, you know, cross promote and help bump each other up and share their experiences, you know, pretty openly. So I've, uh, I've been glad to kind of find my way, you know, into that as, as much as possible. Well, what's also funny, uh, it, well, I mean, not funny, but it, what I've found is everybody that I've talked to on this podcast. So like, I don't know you, I don't know you guys from Adam. I mean, I never, nothing, but I found him almost, almost to a person. Uh, everybody I've had on a podcast has been great. And it's like, we're all friends. We just didn't know it yet. And there's something about all of us doing this. We are whatever that weird kind of person is. We kind of get each other. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's why that shared experience I helps. A lot. <laughs> yeah. That's why when I think about going to uh, like role playing conventions. It's like, it's probably the only time I can actually be with a group of people that I don't know that I feel like at home with. Like no. I can sit at a table and I know I could probably make references discuss or whatever and it seems like even within the community of people who are creating it's even more so that way um we're all just a certain type of people trying to scratch that creative itch and and using economics to kind of help drive us into making our products better you know it's it's that's that whole thing so it's it's not a zero-sum game you know we're all just we're not all chasing for the that small pie we're all just you know all just chasing where we can all win there's no yeah you know nobody's winning at somebody else's expense yeah absolutely i mean and and the whole role-playing world is exploding you know nowadays as well and a lot of that is on you know the most well-known role-playing game ever and some of the bigger names but a lot of that, that trickles down you know the more people play games the more they discover new things um there's hundreds of millions of people out there you know so there's there's plenty of people and plenty of niches of people that will find a thing that kind of sparks your interest that you just have to make, uh, you know, and you're, you're not stepping on anybody else's toes, getting it out there. Well, I remember back when the feeling was that role-playing games were dying, that Warcraft ruled the world. And it was, I believe probably like the <laughs> like early 2000s. Yep. And I thought, well, it's okay. I've got champions. I got hero. I got the hero system. I got a few other things. I've got all the games I really need. And really, what new games could be created that 
doesn't already exist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got the sci-fi one. I got the superhero one. Yeah. I got, I got the medieval one. There's there's no more genres. There's there's yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. more. Yeah, all, all the mechanics have been working at, worked out. It's it's like and it's like so. I find you know as a middle aged uh, guy from you know back in the day, and I look at where the world is now of role playing games. It's like it's absolutely astounding the amount of people of people different than me coming in and doing crazy things and shaking things up and thinking in different directions. It's like it's 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 a it's astounding we're all benefiting from from this explosion there's there's no downside to it other than you know some of the weird people that are creating trouble but uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure but yeah like you said there's the that's the other side of it you said right now too is there's a whole bunch of different people that are different than me you yeah. know that are all and all their voices are needed and all those different point of views and life experiences are needed to make really cool, interesting games with weird mechanics and yeah. stuff that I never would have thought of, you know? And I may not like those mechanics. Yeah. I may not really like those games. I may not like anything about them, but I'm glad they're there and I'm glad people are doing it. It's yeah. just, that's, that's what's amazing. So yeah, astounding times. And uh, well, anyway, <laughs> we'll go for another 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> The space kind of time continuum is getting yes, a little, exactly. A it's a, it's a it's a harsh mistress. We better obey. So anyway, yeah. thanks guys for coming on. Thanks awesome. Thanks, us. Jeff. Appreciate you, brother. Really.